Motorcycles started to become popular in the early 20th century. In the beginning it was a way of moving from one place to another, quickly and conveniently. Already back then people were intrigued by the feel of freedom, great adventures and possibilities these vehicles were able to provide to their users. But somehow just riding the bikes on the roads wasn't enough. Finding the limits of both the riders and the bikes felt fascinating as the people got more and more used to the regular riding on the roads. In 1913 the world witnessed its first organized off-road event, International Six-Day Trial in Carlisle, England. This event is seen as the beginning of enduro motorcycles because it's the first event that had bikes specifically intended for enduro competition. And the crazy thing is that it happened only 10 years after the first production motorcycle got introduced. So it's safe to say that enduro is one of the oldest forms of motorsport. Many things have changed since the very early days and the whole world has developed into something completely different. In the beginning, Motorized bicycles were one of the only ways to move quickly and efficiently from one place to another. During the decades their purpose has evolved into something else. Before they used to be something useful but nowadays they are more for laser and fun. There have been times when bikes get trendy for a certain period but the overall interest towards them has decreased. The whole motorcycle industry is starting to look like it's not part of the modern society anymore. It's starting to look like an old, ancient relic from the past. And of course, the same things applies to off-road riding and enduro as well. Nowadays, more and more people live close to big cities where every corner of the streets have pavement. Riding off the roads, on the gravel, is not a necessary thing to do. You can do it, but for most of us it's not a must anymore. As human beings, if we are not forced to do something, we tend to stick with the more familiar and more comfortable route by our nature. That feature is part of our survival instincts and it's programmed deeply into our DNA. I started riding when I was 13 years old. I'm 26 now, but I can still remember the first days, the first times I tried my first ever bike which my dad bought me from the internet and I can still remember how it came in cardboard boxes and, and we had to assemble the whole thing to get, together with my dad before I could do any single meters with the bike. The wheels were separate, everything, the whole frame, everything was, was in pieces. It was like an IKEA box already back then, 13 years ago. So you can imagine how hard and painful that first assembly of a, of a dirt, Chinese dirt bike was. The reason why my dad bought a bike for me was that I viewed off-road riding as something joyful to do, as something like which brings me experience, which brings me sk new skills. And I still remember the excitement when you go from first gear to second gear, just like in a previous video that I did in Romania, which reminded me from the whole beginning of my riding career, let's say. But as time went on, I got more and more familiar with the bike and the purpose of riding started to shift a little. I started off with comfortable, casual riding for the first couple of years. At some point I wanted to challenge myself and didn't want to do it only for fun anymore. I wanted to get something out of it, so I decided to learn everything about Enduro. I practiced, I failed, I failed again, and then I failed some more. What I realized while riding is that you can never learn everything about off-road riding. It's like a constant learning experience. When you think you have mastered something, the reality strikes you fast and it strikes you hard, and soon you are down on the earth again. The constant challenge you get from off-road riding is one of the most powerful things that keeps people riding and doing the sport. Off-road riding is hugely demanding for your body and your brain. There are thousands of things to consider while riding. Analyzing the terrain, changing your body position, thinking about your settings of your bike and so on. It's definitely not a sport for everyone. The modern people get offended easily when someone disagrees with their beliefs, especially in online forums and platforms. For these people, riding outdoors would be a nightmare.
because you are not in control of everything that comes to your way. Everyone who rides off-road motorsports has a different meaning of why they do it. Some of us do it to have fun, someone wants to learn more skills, and some of us do it for adventure and freedom. I think in the end it doesn't matter why people ride. The most important thing is that people do ride, both now and in the future. I started this video by telling you about the international six-day trial. That event, which is still in the same format as it used to be back then, has been organized every year since 1913, which was 106 years ago. In 1980, the name was changed to International Six Days Enduro, which might be more familiar to you. You and I, we have a massive part in keeping this fantastic off-road sport alive. We don't know anything about our future. It might be electric or then it's not. No matter what it is, we have an essential task to deliver for the upcoming generations. Just like the generations before us did. And that task is sharing the passion of riding the world on two wheels. We won't be here, year 2125, but I hope there are still Enduro riders who have seen this video and continue spreading the message. Thank you so much for watching this video. You can help me to share my passion towards Enduro and off-road riding by sharing and liking this video. And if you enjoyed this video, even just by a tiny bit, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. I do weekly videos about enduro, off-road riding and everything that relates to it. My name is Alexi and we'll see you again next week. Bye.